The draft's over, um, Bird Gang, and we got about eight or so new Baltimore Ravens. This is Coach Evans and Cynthia Tatter presents the 2019 NFL Draft Class for the Baltimore Ravens. So sit back. We're going to go through these uh, undrafted free agents first and work our way down to our number one pick in the first round, Marquise Hollywood Brown. So before we get started, make sure you take the time out to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and anything you agree or disagree with or just want to say, hey, coach, I enjoy what you're doing, make sure you drop it in the comment section and I'll get back with you. But again, this is Coach Evans and Sid the Tyler presents 2019 NFL Draft Class for the Baltimore Ravens. First off, I only see three undrafted free agents we have so far. I think we have more than that, but on my list right now, I have EJ Ajaya, Jalen Smith, and Gerald Willis. So those are the three I'm going to talk about at this time. Uh, EJ Ajaya, looking at him from North Texas, Mean Green, uh, didn't see a lot. Uh, he didn't stand out to me on film. He gets he gets caught up in the wash a lot, trying to navigate you know through blockers and whatnot. And he doesn't look like a that great of a linebacker. Where he does look good at when they walk him up on the edge and let him blitz, or when he's blitzing from the the middle of the field, the middle linebacker area. He does a good job of getting his pads low and taking on those uh, old linemen and getting up under and under them and moving them out the way. So um, his upside would be maybe like a, a blitzing type guy. He's definitely not ready to play on a, a every down basis in the NFL, but uh, I guess we're picking him up just in case one of those guys we got in the middle go down. But I don't see him contributing or even even making the squad this year. Uh, the second undrafted free agent I see here is uh, Jalen Smith. That's the receiver from Louisville. Um, a big guy, 6'4", I think uh, 220 pounds. So if our um, earlier pick or our, some of our guys, our taller guys that, that are not on the roster don't work out, we got this guy in there for competition. And, uh, you know, he did a lot of good things when Lamar was still at Louisville. But since Lamar left, he hasn't done a bunch. He hasn't had a bunch of numbers. I can say part of that is quarterback play, but part of that is also um, the focus is more on the skilled guys when everybody else was focusing on Lamar when he was there. So part of it is him, part of it is not him. I think that's why he didn't get drafted because he didn't put up enough numbers uh, since Lamar left. I think he only had like 30-some-odd catches this year. I don't have my notes in front of me. I left him at another place. But he didn't have a lot of production, so I think that's why he went undrafted. But by us picking him up, I think the chemistry aspect between him and Lamar would help him. I don't know if he makes the team, but I know he's in the, the wide receiver conversation because I think that thing is wide open. So undrafted free agents, drafted guys, I think everybody has a fighting chance to get in there. I think the only solid dude we have is uh, Willie Sneed. And the third guy I have on my list is one of my personal favorites. I don't know how he didn't get undrafted. I mean, how he didn't get drafted. And that's Gerald Willis from the University of Miami. I can see him being him, along with one of our earlier draft picks, being good middle interior lineman for the Baltimore Ravens for a long time. I think Gerald Willis was a, a third a third round talent, but didn't get drafted for, for whatever reason. I'm not sure. I don't know if something came out about him, but I know he didn't do work out at the pro day. He didn't work out at the combine. So maybe that lack of working out, maybe threw some red flags on some people and he didn't get drafted. But Baltimore Ravens have a good defensive tackle. I saw, you know, being a Miami fan, I only saw one game where he was kind of shut down and that was Boston college. And that was Chris Lindstrom. Lindstrom did a great job on him. But other than that, um, Gerald Willis wreaked havoc. Um, you can look at a film. I'm going to tag. Uh, I think Bosch Lombardi did a film on Gerald Willis, and he talked about a lot of controlled chaos. That's what Gerald Willis did. And uh, those are the three undrafted free agents I see so far. I'm sure there are more out there, but on my screen right now, those are three I want to talk about, and that's who we got so far. Okay, what I want to do now is kind of work my way down the draft. So I'll start with our latest pick uh, with the Trace McSorley is our latest pick. Uh, he's round six, the 197th pick of the draft. And I think Trace is going to be a good third quarterback for us. He can, we can run the same style offense with him in the game as far as RG3 and Lamar because Trace is extremely athletic. Uh, he runs the ball well, has decent speed, and he, he, throws a, he throws a darn good deep ball. 
little inaccurate on the quick game, but you know, accurate enough to get the ball to the guys he needs to. But um, he's extremely athletic. That's that's what jumped off the tape with me because he he sit in the pocket, and when one option and two options not open, he take off and and make things happen. wasn't just taking off, getting five and six yards. He was bursting for 30, 40 yards sometimes. Sometimes even scoring. So um, you know, bringing him in to be a number three quarterback and potentially being a number two when RG three decides to either pursue a starting job or just just lay it down. That's a good insurance policy for us to have and Trace McSorley. All right, moving down to round five. The 160th pick, we picked Dylan or Dylan Mack from Texas A&M. Now, this guy is going to be your prototypical one tech or nose. Your one tech or nose. He can sit in there and learn from, from Pierce and the other guys we have. And when it's time for the pay Pierce and, you know, they – command more than we're willing to pay we got mac there waiting to, uh to take that spot and you also hopefully will have Jerry willis sitting in the, in the weeds waiting to take that spot also so um we got some young guys that's going to back up some guys that potentially are about to get massive checks that we necessarily don't want to write in baltimore so having mac there is is potential savior for no drop off in that position when it's time to pay peers and, and other guys right there also the, and our fourth round pick is similar to mac Fourth round pick was Iman Marshall, cornerback from USC. Now, we don't need cornerbacks because we have pretty much the best secondary in the league, if not one of the best secondary. I mean, the best, if not one of the best secondaries in the league. Now, what I the reason I think we picked Marshall is because we get flexibility with Jimmy Smith and Brandon Carr. If this kid can come in and do some of the things we saw on film, well, I saw on film, which is a he had a bunch of pass breakups. He's always in phase. And did a good job of separating ball from receiver. So if this kid can come in and kind of produce on that level with the Ravens, we're going to have flexibility when if, if we want to cut Jimmy Smith, trade him, or the same thing for Brandon Carr because those are some of our older corners. So, you know, if, if Marsh can come in and give you some of that production uh, or reach his potential, we have flexibility with those two guys, and that's going to help with the salary cap. All right, next on the list is Ben Powers. Ben was selected in the fourth round with the 123rd pick, and we needed an interior lineman. We need a left guard. Bad, bad, bad. And Powell's you know, going to come in, and, and I don't know if he'll start at that spot, but he could potentially push some guys to get their act together and play left guard. Powell's may not be the starter next year. or may not be the starter going into the, um, into the fall, but he's going to push Hurst and Skura and, and all those other guys to get their stuff in order to start because you don't want a rookie coming in and taking your spot. But we needed an interior lineman. Ben Powers uh, kind of fits that mold. Not going to go into grave detail on him because I have a video on Ben Powers that I'll link. Um, should be right now. So you can go check that out. But Ben Powers is our fourth round pick, 123rd overall, to play interior O line for us, which we badly, badly, badly need. All right. Moving up to the fourth round, also still 113 pick. is one of the gems in the draft, I think. Uh, Justice Hill. Uh, he gives us the, the home run threat, the speed to go with the, the two power backs we got with uh, Gus Edwards and Mark Ingram. This kid can score from just about anywhere, given the situation. He can catch the ball pretty good. Does a good job of catching with his hands. I think he finished with about 900 plus yards this year. Didn't hit 1,000. At Oklahoma State, but they had that wide open offense and a lot of guys touching the ball. And, um, you know, this guy can hit it and score from just about anywhere on the field. We need that because um, after the first quarter and a half or two quarters or three quarters of Gus and Mark, this guy can come in, you know, spelling for two or three plays and hit home runs. If we get six touchdowns out of this kid, that'd be great. If we can get six out of him and ten out of Gus and ten out of Mark, we should be good because we know we're going to get another five or six out of Lamar uh, running the ball. So that's right around 30, 35 touchdowns right there. All right, moving on down to the third round. We picked Miles Borkin. Now, those that know me, uh, been listening to my channel, you guys have a general idea of who I felt this pick should have been. But they didn't pick him. They chose fit to go with this guy. And let's talk about his positives and whatnot. So even though I didn't want Miles, Miles is now a Raven. So I'm a fan of Miles Borkin now. And this is what I saw when I went back and looked at some more of his film, even though I had looked at it earlier for my top nine wide receivers. The fact that he's 6'4", 
like almost 230. He still ran a 4-4 at the combine. And he did a, he does a great job of catching the ball with his hands, plucking the ball out the air. He's not a body catcher. Miles goes up and he gets balls out of the air. When smaller guys are on him, he makes sure he punishes them and uses his height effectively. Now, he is kind of robotic in his run movements at times, but still running 4-4 four, four at 6-4, can't really beat that. You know, I, you know that's uh, he's going to be in the competition alongside with um, Jalen Smith. Jalen Smith, 6-4, right at 220 also. So, them guys going to fight for that. They gonna, Him, those two, uh, um, Scott, the, you know, Jaleel Scott, those are all taller guys. They're going to fight for that spot. But um, round three, Miles Borkin from Notre Dame. I think he had like 30-something odd catches, um, no more than 40. He had about 700, 600 yards receiving. Don't remember the touchdown off the top of my head, but this is the type of guy we need because he has a huge catch radius. And I don't know how accurate Lamar's going to come back, even though I'm sure he's going to come back even more accurate than he left. But still, we need a big catch radius guy to help us out, you know, go along with those tight ends and whatnot and our number one pick. Right, so let's move down to, let's see. I think we had another pick in the third round. We did. Jalen Ferguson. All right. So we're replacing the edge guys we lost with Jalen Ferguson. Now, what do you expect you should get out of a defensive end? First, you should have size. He has that. He's about 6'5", I think right around 260, 270, right around there. Um, what you, you also, uh, need a strong guy. If you look at film on, uh, Jalen Ferguson, you see him bull rushing people. You see him running them out the way. You see him just taking people up, picking them up and putting them in where he want them at. Then going to get the quarterback. You see all that. You want to see Ben, you see him, uh, speed rush off the edge, dip that shoulder and get on around. You see him with the, the club and the arm swipe. You see all that, you know, from Jalen Ferguson. The only negative I have is. All this stuff was done at a lower level of college football. Now, he's at Louisiana Tech there in the Conference USA. You know, all he he broke Terrell Suggs' sack record, but at Louisiana Tech. That's where, you know, I kind of fall off on it. Now, if all those skill sets translate to the NFL, it's great. You know, great pick. Um, and it is what it is. But I I'm not saying I don't want the guy. I'm just saying his production came from a lower level of college football. And it's going to be tough to see if that translates. But we'll find out real early if that translates once uh, we get in the fall camp. And the, the vertical be out on that quick. He's going to um, he's gonna have to play some. He's going to have to play fast by us losing two edge guys. So he's going to have to have a, a vital role in the rotation this year. So we'll see early on if Jalen Ferguson can, can play, especially in the preseason, because he'll probably get the, the bulk of those reps. Which leads us to our number one pick. Marquise Hollywood. Brown. Now, Marquise Brown is coming off the, uh, how you say it, Liz Frank uh, surgery. He had um, a couple of, um, not rods, but he had something inserted in his foot. I was watching Draft Academy, and I saw where he was working on his foot, and he had, like, some stuff in the top of his foot and whatnot. But he should be 100% healthy when it comes to fall camp. And um, what more can you say about Marquise Brown? Speed. Speed. He can run deep routes and run past people. He can run your short routes and, and get you some run out of the catch. Uh, if he doesn't perform enough to get into the wide receiver rotation, he can be your return man. So you get some return value out of him. But um, he's by far the most electric player or the most electric wide receiver in this draft. Because he can take your, your, your tunnel screens to the house. He can take a hitch to the house. Take slants to the house. Then he can go over top with, with goals and, and posts and, 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 and long over routes and things of that nature. So we got, a, we got a good set of receivers for competition. I'm not saying the receiver group is good, but the competition is set because there's a bunch of guys in there with no real one or two that so they're going to have to compete, compete, compete every day to try to get those uh, those reps. And even if I think we picked up a, uh, another undrafted free agent receiver that's a tall guy also, I don't remember. I think it went across my screen on Twitter or whatnot, but I'm not sure who it is. But whether it be undrafted free agents or drafted guys, everybody in that receiver room got to compete. Everybody. Because there's no stud in that room yet. I think Snead might be the safest safest person in that room. Because the only, only person that has quality 
um, game time is Snead and uh, Seth Roberts. You know, Chris Moore played a little bit in the game, but but Snead started, Seth Roberts started with Oakland, I think, and Chris Moore got spot duty last year. So um, that's our draft class. You know, I'm happy with it. Overall, I think I give us a B on it. We fill some holes. We put some competition in the receiver room. If Ferguson can, can you know, live up to the hype, we got a good edge guy. We got an interior lineman and powers that hopefully pans out. And we got a um, number two quarterback for, for years to come. So, you know, the cost, I'm, you know, I'm happy with, with the way it went down. I had a day or two to sit back and think about it. And, you know, even though there's some picks in there that I, I personally wouldn't have picked, that's why they pay you the big bucks. And I just sit back and talk about it for, for little to no bucks. But a uh, good job, DaCosta, and I, I'm going to give the Baltimore Ravens a B, a solid B for this draft because we filled some holes, we got some competition going, and we headed in the right direction toward uh, the 2019 season. So, again, make sure you um, like this video, comment, uh, make sure you subscribe also if you haven't subscribed, and make sure you check out the merch. Make sure you see, you see the After Lee shirt. Make sure you see the um, different version of Sip the Tally shirts I have. You know, go ahead and get you one for the upcoming season. We also got some Raven Roundup shirts out there. So I'll put the link in the description, and you guys go check that out, and I appreciate it if you get you one. But, again, this is Coach Evans. Sit the Tele Films, 2019 Ravens NFL Draft Class. We're out.